everybody, it's Joe from The Spot of Joe. Now, Project Unchained for SEO reasons. I actually searched for Project Unchained on YouTube, and thankfully, it works. So now you can find my channel, finally. The Spot of Joe, unfortunately, was not able to be searched for whatever reason. So, Project Unchained it is. I will probably change the name of the podcast, too, so people aren't confused. Um, my friend recently told me that he thought it was hilarious that I've been doing my, sh my videos with my shirt off, so that's going to continue. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. Actually, hold on. Let me get my good microphone. This way y'all can hear me better. So... Today I'm going to do a little bit of an um, impromptu thing. I was thinking I was going to script it, but I'm not going to do that today. Maybe I'll do that another time. Maybe I'll do that in a future video where I script it or at least have notes to go off of. Yes, I have pants on. Maybe you want me not to have pants on. If enough people are into it, I might do it like an OnlyFans where I do these lectures naked. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I don't know. If there's enough people, I won't say no. I won't deprive you of that. This one is how to march to your, the beat of your own drum. When I first went into blogging, it was only recently with the, um, the feedback of Andy from Kill You're in a Loser that I decided to go all into content creation. <coughs> as well as girls, and my sex life right now. And my, my body is, um, is, an, is a goal that is related to my sex life. So I count that in there. It was only from his encouragement, he was like, Joe, you're like really good content creator. Why aren't you going on the content? Because um, I was inconsistent. I, part of it was I didn't believe that I could. And when it comes to marching to the beat of your own drum, it's like, that's one of the things that is really, really hard to get over for a long time is feeling like you deserve to build your own path. It was consistently the feedback I would get. I would get feedback from my friends, mostly friends. My family didn't really like what I... I mean, they were proud of me for going my own path and for finding it, but they thought it was very foolish that I didn't do... I didn't go the job route because I went to Rutgers for computer science, which is, you know, as most of you know, in the U.S., uh, starting salary is 80000 about, you know, plus or minus 80000 is pretty easy to get for a starting salary. I'm like, well, why shouldn't I do that? I, everybody's telling me I should do that. I feel like I should, but I don't want to. And when I was at Rutgers, I consistently got frustrated and frustrated. I was president of a computer science um, club. Like, I was good at programming, and I was really good at with people. I was actually better with people than I was with programming, but I was still really good with programming. And at some point, I just got super fucking frustrated. I learned that I really hated programming. The more I did it, the more I hated it. I'm like, well, maybe it's school. Maybe it's this one particular job that I got, and then before I was even trained, they fired me because somebody had assassinated my character. Somebody, I posted on Facebook that I got the job. I was so excited. And then somebody called him up and be like, well, he did this, this, and this, and accused me of shit that wasn't true or like was exaggerated or whatever. I never figured out, found out what they accused me of. They would never tell me. They like vaguely said like the category of things that it was. Um... And I lost the job before I even started, and I was so fucking mad. And so I'm like, well, maybe I don't like programming because of this experience. Maybe programming is okay. So recently, I went all into getting a programming job for about two months. I got a, code, a coding contract, did about 125 hours on that. 125. <sighs> fucking bug. 125 billable hours on that. Uh, made like over six thousand dollars in a few weeks, which was nice. You know, it's it a good chunk of money. I liked it, but near the end, it got very clear to me that I was frustrated as fuck. I hated it so much, 
I was very angry and, 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 and not happy with the process of programming. I just didn't like programming. And that was when Andy reached out and was like, dude, I've been listening. I watched a few of your episodes. I listened to a couple of your podcasts. Um, fucking shout out to him. Boss ass dude, especially what he's doing now. Um, he's uh, a legend. But uh, he he encouraged me. And I'm like, dude, you of all people saying that makes me feel really good. I Why the fuck am I not going into content creation? I, I just The only reason I wasn't successful was because I wasn't consistent. And it all comes back to going to the beat of your own drum. And me of all people knows how hard that is because I was so fucking good at doing everything I wanted. And I'm not like being an asshole to others, but I'm like, I don't give a shit what others thought about what I was doing. I'm like, I'm going to do my thing. Um, and I mean, for, for God's sakes, like one of the things that is super hard for me, that is super, super stressful, um, and is really hard for me to come to terms with is cause I had and still have a lot of shame about it is, um, being bisexual. Um, I decided to say it right now because I think it's important for me to get over the shame of it. I, I, I do believe I like girls more than I like guys by a large extent, but um, like even that, like there was a time where I was super comfortable with it. And that is a hundred percent a really easy way to march to the beat of your own drum because, um, in society, it's really not acceptable for a guy to be bisexual. You're ridiculed by guys and by girls. Um, and then of course some, like a lot of people are cool, but I mean like in the societal narrative, it's like you're either one or the other. You're not both. You can't be both. It doesn't make any sense. So that was something that was hard for me to come to terms with. Um, and I know some people on Andy's forums are going to be a bit shocked by this because I've been pretty quiet about that um, on purpose. I've been pretty quiet on purpose because I don't like to talk about it. I'm very ashamed. Very, very, very ashamed of it. It's something I still haven't been able to deal with. <clears throat> but um, when it comes to... So that's marching my, to be to my own drum. Dropping out of college and traveling the world... It was really three countries. I count, I want to travel more. I, I, I say traveling the world because two Americans, like three countries is, oh my God, like, and I've traveled to seven total, but it's like three countries, that's the world, but it wasn't totally the world. It was just, you know, three countries, but it was an amazing trip. And I dropped out of college to do those three countries and um, to build my own online business along the way, which, you know, I did, I made a little bit of money. I made some doing graph design. That was marching to the beat of my own drum. This YouTube channel is marching to the beat of my own drum. There are so many people in my life that have told me they admire me marching to the beat of my own drum. And then recently I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me like solve my money problems and go all into like coding. And I felt like a fucking fraud because I had spent years trying to follow my, the beat of my own drum. And all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck? I'm doing everything my parents want me to do. And, like, I'm doing what society wants me to do. Fuck this shit. I was doing it for my reasons. So, like, I could kind of say, like, okay, I might be doing what they want me to do, but I'm doing it on my time for my reasons, but for myself. I'm not doing it because they're telling me. But it was a fine line. It was a fine line. I really felt like I was going against my core values of freedom, of, um, I like to call it self-authoring. One of my values is something I, I, I like to call self-authoring. Um, a former mentor of mine, I did an interview with him, uh, George Katz. He has a Greek last name that's hard to pronounce, so I, we, have, we all call him Katz, K-A-T-S. There's a, in my interviews, in my, um, I'll put it in the show notes. That is a, uh, a thingy. Um, that is a, um, <clears throat> a thing I decided... Um, is one of my core values is self-authoring and I felt like I was going against that I was like what the fuck man the fuck like you're doing what other people want you to do this is not okay this is like ooh, look at that I've been looking working out uh, <laughs> this is this is not okay man this is really not okay you're you're going against your value of doing what you want to do and and I, I really feel like it's one of those things where I had to transgress one of my values to to do it to, to follow the beat of my own drum. And so I can understand there's so many people in this world. I found that a lot of people told me they looked up to me because I was doing my own thing. This was before I went into coding for those few months. Um, 
which I still feel is a transgression of my values. But they're like, dude, you're doing your own thing. I'm fucking inspired by that. And I want you to keep doing it. I want to watch you do it because damn, man, like you're inspiring me to do my own thing. You're inspiring so many people to do their own thing and I fucking love it. And that made me feel really happy because even to this day, I'm only starting to realize that people need to hear me, that people need to hear my journey and people need to hear the things that I did and the things that I went through um, because there are too many people who are like, well, I'm going to do what everyone else tells me I have to do because that's what I think I have to do. And some people are still in that daze. They don't realize that they can wake up, decide that they own their life and that they don't have to do what other people tell them they have to do. And they might have the best interest. I mean, your parents have the best interest. They're not trying to make you have a ba- uh, an, an unsatisfying life. They're not trying to make you have an unfulfilling life. They're going off the things that were taught to them and that might have even been true for them in their generation. Like, 100%, I believe your parents have your... M- most parents, not all parents, I think a lot of par- Some parents are fuck-ups and, like, some parents genuinely do wish malice on their children. I think most parents have their children's best interests in mind. That might just be coming at it from either an overprotective because of their parents um, or like maybe an outdated way or maybe like not so tailored way. Maybe it's like it would work for them but not for their kid. Not all parents are good mentors or life coaches. That's a different skill. I mean, it's related, but your parents are good at keeping you protected and raising you and hopefully teaching you the right things and teaching you how, what to expect from the world and discipline and all that stuff. That's what parents are for. They're not for, like, after you're 18 telling you what to do because you live in a different world than they did. You have to understand, especially if you're thinking about, like, oh, my parents said that you have to, do, you have to get a good job. Well, okay, they're living in a different world. There are so many, so, so, so many tools to make money doing other things nowadays. I mean, there always were tools. There always were successful entrepreneurs. But today, there's, okay, really fucking easy tools. Shopify. There's a 14-day fucking trial, first of all. You can pay nothing 14 days. And even after that, it's like 30 bucks a month at the lowest tier, I believe, which is more than enough to sell things. Uh, So Shopify, there's Shopify. There's um, Patreon. Andy is making over $1,000 a month in Patreon a month after he fucking started his Patreon. That's impressive as fuck. Now, granted, he has an awesome product he worked years for. His expertise in women and sex and relationships between men and women. He actually starts helping women. Now, he had an awesome episode geared towards women um, on his podcast, The Inner Winner Show. Plug below. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's that. Number three is... Um, Sorry, I blanked. ClickFunnels is pretty freaking awesome. Facebook ads. All these things are amazing ways you can make a lot of money on your own. There's so many fucking tools. Your parents are coming from a generation that is completely different. (laughs) Completely different. It's 100% different from where you're at now. I think it's really important to, to talk about that. It's really fucking important to talk about that. I think that you really need to come from a place of understanding that their advice while it might be best intentioned, is coming into your ears from a different perspective. A dated perspective that may have been true for them, but is not true nowadays. So, this probably won't be the last episode on how to beat, how to, um, how to march to the beat of your own drum. And it won't be the last shirtless episode for sure. Uh, my friend made sure of that. I was probably going to do shirtless episodes a lot, but he made sure that I will because he was like, yo, I think it's hilarious. I'm like, all right, guess I'm doing more. Um, as you saw on the notes, on the titles of my videos, I'm starting to do like day one, day two, day three. That's because this is my new 365. I've decided coding, fuck that. That was my 365 for the last two months or so. But um, restarting, because I realized that coding is bullshit. I don't want to do it. I might do an episode about that. We'll see. But this is episode, I think, day seven? I think this is day seven. A week in. Broskies and girlskies is a weekend. Are you excited? Are you excited for the year of YouTube?
I hope you are. I have to find the lens cap because I gotta do that cool lens thing that I do at the end of each show. But uh, yeah, look at that little pimple on my nose. If you like this episode, subscribe because there's more coming.